Linux application programming session 16 born again shell bash scripting basically this session is about writing shell scripts this is good for uh, participants who don't have any Linux background because we will be discussing some concept of variables and you know other features other commands in Linux which we do we use Shell scripting helps you in automating, uh, automating the task in Linux. What we will understand, the agenda of the session is introduction to bash scripting, scripting versus interactive shell values or shell use, user variables and environment variables, arithmetic in bash, Tests, conditions and loops in bash, input and output and the useful scripts, some examples, basics. What shell scripting, as the name itself it suggests that scripting means where we have something already written and dumped into a file and we execute them. Shell script is nothing more than that. We put some commands in a file and we make it executable and we execute the files. No compiler, no binary script generation, nothing. We just put the commands into the file. We execute the file. All the commands which are there in the file, they are executed. We use the term programming because we have all the three constructs require a typical programming for a typical programming which is sequence selection and iteration. Sequence refer to step by step instructions. Selection refer to if construction select construct case and iteration refer to the loops. So what we will learn in this session this will explore script programming or shell script programming or bash programming or bash scripting whatever way you want to understand it in the born again shell that is bash otherwise known as bash bash is the de facto standard command shell and shell scripting language on linux and other linux systems or unix systems we'll investigate some of the major language features of bash including variables, arithmetic control structures, input and output and function creation. So we have some new participants uh, new to Linux. They will enjoy it. They will like it and straight away jumping to shell programming. It will be good for them. Preliminaries, some basics. Get the shell you are currently using. by displaying the value of the variable shell. Conventionally, all the variables which are used by a shell, they are in uppercase. The shell, when you log into the system, there are some scripts which are executed which set these variables. There are two types of variables, local variables and environment variables. The environment variables are set or configured or initialized by something what is known as login scripts. And it starts with the etc profile script. Under etc profile, there is a script, uh, under etc folder, there is a script with the name profile. This sets some variables and this profile this script calls all the scripts stored into etc profile.d directory. All the scripts from etc profile.d directory are called and they are executed. Then uh, in your home directory, there is a script with the name bash underscore profile. That script is executed and that script called another file called dot bash rc. This way, the four or five scripts which are called and all the scripts from a given directory are executed, they set various environment variables for you and one of them is shell variable. 
if you want to just uh, display the value of this variable or other variables you can use the command echo followed by dollar followed by the variable name let's say shell while initialize you don't need dollar sign but while fetching the value of the variable you require dollar sign and you'll get this value bin bash if you want to see all the variables you can use the command env so you just type env and if you want to use pager you can use piping symbol more that will display all the variables set command will display all the local variables env display all the environment variables the difference between the two is the local variables are available in the current shell only whereas environment variables are available in the current shell as well as any called shell the echo command is used to print the value to the screen when we print the content of a variable we precede it by the dollar symbol technically it print out the location of the shell we are using scripting basics shell scripts are text files as i introduced what you do is you simply put your files put your commands into a file and that file is nothing but the script file just make the file executable and execute it so shell script are text file that contain series of commands to be executed shell scripts are useful for performing automating commonly used commands performing system administration and troubleshooting creating simple applications manipulating of text or files and application prototyping there are a lot of uh, example use cases uh, one of my client asked from us that can you write a script that uh, where i take the backup of my database but uh, only when the log size is more than 200 gb and then the file is to be moved automatically and i don't want my server to go down and it was running on linux so uh, he gave me different scenarios and i used to create the script and uh, they paid me handsome amount to be honest so self scripting is basically used for automating these tasks conditional automation and execution this is a very good thing so this is a simple script let's understand a simple script as first step to bash scripting is available in your directory first.sh under session 16 directory and this is a common very simple directory camera is on some of the participants please be careful bin bash this is called shebang or sh bang this actually first line tells which script which shell will be used to parse this file means the binary to be parsed to execute these commands so it is going to use bash to execute the commands given in this third line display the message welcome to within double quotes i given the message but interestingly we can interpolate these variables we can use the variables and it will be substituted by the value of the variable so when you run this you will get this kind of message welcome to bin bash scripting of course you need to change the permission to make it executable and that command is ch mode change mode plus x first dot sh this will make the script executable and then you can execute it by simply typing dot slash first dot sh so when you write a shell script what is the step 1 step one use a text editor nano editor vi editor or any editor of your choice to create a text file containing the commands the first line of the shell script contains the magic word called shebang or shell bang and that is a hash exclamation mark apart from this other than this wherever this hash is in the file that will be treated as a comment so hash exclamation mark first line exclamation mark that has a special meaning and then without any space you type the path of the shell uh, which is to be used to parse the script any other line if you have in your file which start with a hash that will be treated as a comment create the shell script which is self documenting by putting appropriate comments 
if you enter this by pressing a slash key which is actually the forward slash this is basically refer to line continuation or the command continuation when you have commands which it spread across more than one line so this key followed by enter key on most keyboard this will enable you to enter the command that spans multiple lines step number 2 make the script executable a plus x means for all users for everybody add the permission plus x plus means add and x means executable to execute the script there are two options place the script in a directory in the executable path which is given by the path environment variable or specify the absolute path or relative path to the script on the command line generating the output you have noticed that we use echo command there are two versions of echo command if you notice here welcome to shell scripting this can be done at the command line also this can be done at shell prompt also simply put when you are working in linux you can simply write this echo command and this will display the message this hyphen n will put the message in the current line means after displaying the message it will not automatically feed a new line the cursor will remain in the same line where the message is displayed that's a hyphen n option so printf generate formatted output also the same function which we use in c language we have function here also but remember no parentheses no comma no comma uh, you know comma here nothing simple string followed by space and then a variable name so this variable will be substituted here and format specifiers are accepted and recognized by this command that is a printf command so whether whatever kind of output you require you can use multiple lines line continuation with hyphen n or formatted outputs with substitution of variables you can use printf all these are possible similar to c printf function does not automatically put a new line at the end of the output because you know this is similar to printf the same uh, convention it follows so you have to use slash n variables in bash variables are untyped there is no data type means that all variables are in essence strings this does not mean that we cannot do arithmetic on bash variables we can there are ways to do arithmetic on bash also we can create a variable and then inspect it like x equal to 22 this is a variable created echo dollar x so you will get the output as 22 if you take another variable we we start we created a variable x a place holder and we put the value 22 in that place note that lack of space that's important point here lack of space between the variable name equal sign and the value that is relevant if you put space before equal sign or after equal sign it will be a problem not acceptable to reference a variable we need to press it uh, preceded it with a dollar sign this variable is scoped that is it exists for the life of the shell meaning that it is local variable it is available in the current shell only then we talked about the environment variable as i explained the bash interpreter defines a set of environment variables to define the environment these variable exist when the bash shell is started like this so if you see here in this example session 16 file name env.sh folder welcome to host name i am displaying some of the variables here this is host name is one environment variable uh, running on os type this is also environment variable 
you are user your username is displayed and your home directory is displayed these are all examples of uh, uh, environment variables your script has been running for these many seconds all these are environment variables here as i said if you want to fetch more environment variables you can try and take note first time i am giving you a question please take your pen and paper and write the question use or modify this env.sh script and add at least 10 more environment variables with appropriate message the way they are given here question clear use the same script modify it Use the env command with piping symbol, identify any 10 other variables, identify them and display their value with appropriate message in the same script. The first time I have given you additional task apart from uh, executing and uh, inspecting the simple programs. Please do this program, take note of this program, I will be giving you more programs in the shell scripting. And uh, keep that pen and paper ready, ready please. When the shell script is executed, we'll see this message welcome to host server.example.com running linux gnu you are user root and your home directory is slash root the version of bash running on the system is 4.2 release and the script has been running for more than one seconds so you got all the values of the environment variable when you run the script variables can be used at the shell prompt as i explained earlier also there is no confusion there is no problem x equals 1 declare hyphen r x that is interesting this declare hyphen r will do what will make this variable read only meaning if i try to change this value now it will not allow and let me show you that i try to change the value of this variable x equals 2 and uh, that's the error we are getting that read only variable so if I try to use dollar echo, echo sorry echo dollar x, I'll get value one only. Y is equal to two, and this hyphen i is as another effect. Like I get, declare the value uh, of y, I get the value two. Persist dollar pwd, declare hyphen x persist. Export grab persist. I'll get the value of this variable and the password uh, a pwd command which is basically uh, present working directory value of the present working directory is stored into persist variable and I declare that and I get the value of this uh, persist variable so uh, that's the value so this is uh, this is more on shell variables or environment variable and local variables in the, in the bash shell of course to make them environment you have to add export word before that variable declaration like export x equals 1 export x equals 2 y equals 2 you have to use export word before that how can we perform simple arithmetic we can perform simple arithmetic on variables but there is a difference from the normal assignments interesting point here let's understand one by one let sum equal to dollar x plus y this is not added you will not get this value x plus y means it is not 25 you will get uh, x plus y this will have x plus y nothing else right because sorry uh, yeah dollar x plus dollar y uh, because it's not displaying the value it is not calculating the sum yeah this is calculating the sum all right so Oh, let is there, correct. Sorry, 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 my apology. We are using let, so it will calculate. Let sum equal to dollar $x plus $y. Diff, that is difference is equal to dollar $x minus dollar $y. Remember carefully here, there is a space, extra space here. And here also, before the sign also, there is an extra space. There must be a space before the operator, before and after the operator. And then double parenthesis, mandatory let multiply is equal to dollar uh, x multiplied by dollar y let division let modify let expression so you will get the value it will display all the sum difference multiplication division modulus and exponential exponential is used for double star 
so this let command will help you to do calculations and uh, for difference if you notice I have not used let I can simply use double parenthesis symbol but before the double parenthesis symbol I must use dollar sign this is typical case this is one specific case, use case apart from this six the rest all are same then we can have bitwise operators also bitwise operators include bitwise left shift bitwise right shift bitwise and bitwise or which is a vertical bar not displayed accidentally removed typo so left shift right shift and or negate bitwise not and exclusive or all these operators are allowed as an example you can consider this a equals 4 if you do a left shift you try to use a b you will get 8 so this is uh, hexadecimal c and hexadecimal 3 and you are using exclusive or between the two so convert them into binary check the value convert that into back to decimal and the answer will be 15 logical operators traditional logical operators include logical and or both operators are available double or actually double piping symbol sorry there's a mistake again here the double piping symbol is to be used so this is uh, like 2 and 0 so it, it will be 0 because uh, both must be true 4 and 1 is 1 3 or 0 1 basically true means 1 and false means 0 if you try that okay echo 0 or 0 that will be 0 exit status is used when you call one script from another and you want to capture the status of the exit whether the script runs successfully or it failed exit status can be captured in a variable and your script can also return the exit status command exit with an exit status 0 for success and for failure it is 0 to 255 any value in Linux with this uh, return value 0 for success and any value apart from 0 to 1 to 255 will be a failure exit status of most recently executed command will be found in the special variable with the name dollar question mark this if you try echo dollar question mark you can try with a simple command try any wrong command type anything and then use echo dollar question mark you will get the value try a successful command any command then use echo dollar question mark you will get the exit status of that command so most recently used command exit status of that you can find using dollar question mark cell script may set an exit status with the exit command like exit 1 indicating that it is error now the control structures there are three types of uh, constructs in the shell programming sequential structures the program flow line one after another no break no loop no iteration selection structures code execution based on logical decision I'm referring to if statement we have done so many of so much of programming I'm sure you just you are looking forward where the syntax show me the syntax so let's jump to the syntax first is uh, single line conditional execution this sign double ampersand if used at a command line the command on the right hand side will be executed only if the command on the left hand side is successfully executed this is used if the command on the left hand side is failed means not executed successfully then the command on the right hand side will be executed like if I try grab sangwan and there is no sangwan user in part pass wd then I am displaying message no sangwan means when this command fail only then this will be displayed this echo command will be executed 
copy some files ampersand echo so that means when this command is completed successfully i am using the word echo uh, display the message done so this will be executed on successful execution of the command on the left hand side the structure can be used in the command line as well we can put them in the commands also in the script also now the actual if statement the if selection structure executes the body of the structure only if the condition tested is true but there are a few points important with respect to shell scripting here condition is to be given in square bracket and there must be a space before and after this square bracket opening and square bracket close there has to be a space here before and after semicolon and then you write the then in the same line if you don't want to use semicolon then you have your then should go into the next line i repeat if you put semicolon you can continue in the same line otherwise you have to write this word then in the next line and then the commands once the commands are done interestingly you close the command by writing this in opposite Uh, reverse order the character f i f i f written in reverse direction opposite direction so f i this is how you close the if statement in shell or you can use this way as i told you condition then commands f i no semicolon required in this case and this is the command condition dot sh in your directory a equals 1 b equals 2 if a equals to b then say equal else say unequal point to be noted here arithmetic operators are different it is not equal to sign this is not allowed or no double sign not allowed they are not for arithmetic they are for string so we'll discuss that but right now eq stands for equality hyphen eq another important point i just been talking about the space before and after the sign so there is a space here there is a space here there is a space before the curly square bracket there is a space here so remember that space that's very crucial in linux shell scripting we can have nested if statements in the example we test the integers for using lt that is less than operator gt for greater than eq for equality the other symbols other operators are eq for equality any for not equal to gt greater than ge greater than equal to lt less than le less than equal to these are the symbols for mathematical calculations or arithmetic operators and these are the examples lt less than gt greater than eq equal to and double equal it is displaying actually it is not printing it is the operators are 1 2 and 3 three operators are demonstrated in this example and the program in your that is condition 2 there are file test programs when you use file test operators to determine the attributes of a file meaning you may check whether file is a directory it is a regular file executable file file has read permission file has write permission file is owned by you there are so many file tests which can be used for your conditional execution based on the command based on the file and these are the test hyphen a existence of the file hyphen f test for regular file hyphen s non zero size file hyphen d it is a directory file hyphen h it is a symbolic link hyphen r read permissions on the file hyphen w writeable file x means executable file so these are file specific test you use example available in your directory file attribute dot sh we use the file argument supplied at the command line point to be noted dollar 1 is the command line arguments means when you call this script let's say dot slash file attribute you have to supply a file name 
and this attribute whatever name you sp uh, specify that will go to dollar one and we are assigning dollar one to the file now this variable the file will have whatever name you supplied here in addition to the name of the script we call it as uh, argument or command line arguments command line parameters passing these command line arguments to the shell script so we are displaying uh, the content and you can pass the directory file executable file non executable file it will tell you whether it is a regular file whether it is a directory or it is a symbolic link or not recognized there are some string text also if you are comparing strings then the operators for strings are equal for equality double equal for also same not equal not equality alphabetically less than alphabetically greater than is null not null so these are the tests we use for comparison of the strings example source code available in condition 3 dot sh file like i am typing something string has this value if the string has this value i mean if they are same then uh, it is true otherwise you will get the message uh, that it's not true i mean the uh, otherwise we are not doing anything sorry semicolon separate individual lines in one line uh, statement this is what precisely i was talking about you put the semicolon and you can continue in the same line like uh, we continue echo and then semicolon and we are putting the fi in the same line so this is also possible you want to put the entire command multiple commands in one line you put the semicolon then we have selection structure using the case statement the case command permit sequence of tests constructs utilizing integers or strings it is similar to your switch command in c language case variable n so you are checking the value of this variable and these are the patterns so pattern 1 do something pattern 2 do something now what is the difference point to be noted here this pattern means you can specify regular expression here after that you have to put a parenthesis symbol and then you write the commands after all the commands are written you must use double symbol a double semicolon this symbol is mandatory if you don't use this sum, double colon, semicolon symbol we know something what is known as fall through the fall through will execute the next statement as well so to break that we use this double semicolon but in this case we have not discussed what will happen if none of the value is satisfied then we have the other option called default and the statement is closed with the case written in reverse order you see carefully e a s c so e a s c that is c a s c from this side so this is how we close the case example in your system case not as such variable equal dollar one again here also you are passing some command line arguments you can you can pass any of these values so if you pass 1 you will display this value value is 1 if you pass 2 it will check value is 2 right so if you pass any other value you will get this kind of message so read the instructions carefully and see how it is working the star or the default means uh, uh, none of the above the default we can also test ranges with the test construct another example case 2 not as such so here we are changing range 0 to 5 the value is between 0 to 5 6 to 9 6 to 9 and the value is something else so star means something else whatever value you pass you will get the appropriate message so inspect the script then add something from your side every program should have something extra added from your side and this is the task I am requesting you to complete because I have given you all these scripts ready for trying out these commands more on case 
the case construct can be used to test characters as well. In the example concatenation of ranges a to z a uppercase a to z test for alphabetic characters. So case 3.sh script whatever you pass that will be stored into care case care n and this is your passing if you are passing alphabet then an uppercase or lowercase character single character if you type if you type a number you will get number and you are typing star means you are typing something else and ESAC in the next example a string is checked against four possibilities now this is very interesting example here name dollar one means you will pass this in the command line argument case name in if yao that means if you enter yao in the command line you will get the message it's yao if you type uh, vertical bar that is or so either sangwan or ram so if you type any of them you will get the message it's me if you type ronald you will get ronald if you type anything else you will get i don't know so this is a string comparison and string examples note that at line number 7 the test construct is made up of two different tests if the name is sangwan or ram then the test is satisfied and you will get the output we use logical or operator in this case which is legal within the case test construct the while loop it provides a method of performing a set of commands while the condition remains true while condition true do commands done while loops are known as uh, sentinel repetition structures so example program in your directory loop dot sh variable is one while vari variable less than five less than equal to five so variable is dollar where and we are adding it let where equals where plus one and until loop works exactly in the same way except that it examines the condition it continues to execute as long as the command following the until statement executes successfully the difference between while and until is that loop may not be executed even once in while because if the condition is false right in the beginning the uh, control will not not enter into the loop itself even once whereas in case of until the condition is tested after at least the body of the loop is executed at least once therefore even if the condition is satisfied in the first attempt the body is executed at least once so that's what the difference between until and a while then we can have nested if uh, nested loop statements loops may also be nested in the next example we generate a manipulation table for sorts using two variables so this is a simple example loop 2 outer lt5 do inner loop so you can check that inner and outer body and you will display the appropriate message you are adding and incrementing line number 5 to 16 they start the outer loop and 8 to 11 they start the inner loop and as usual it is nothing different it is your typical only the syntax part I am sure uh, if I am not wrong you are looking for the syntax part only rest logically I, I don't think anything is difficult for you repetition structures for loop the for repetition structure provides a method of iterating or looping through a list of values and executing commands on each of these values for variable n list of values do commands and finally you have to close the loop by done the example script is available in your folder with the name for loop.sh we can also 
huge strings within our looping range and that is loop 3 dot sh hyphen n first four planets are now we are going to get inside this one by one four planets is mercury venus earth mars do so therefore what it will do it will get inside the loop starting from here and it will find one by one it will body will execute with one value at a time because by definition the separator is space or tab so mercury venus earth and mars these are four different values and every value will go into one variable at a time so what you will get is uh, individual mercury venus earth and mars these four values will be printed continue and break the way we have continue and break keywords in c language we exactly same way we have that continue and break here also the while loop can be disrupted during the execution the meaning of the statement is same continue will stop the current execution of the loop and re-examines the initial condition possibly restarting the loop break will stop the processing of the loop entirely jumping past the done statement exit will exit from the shell script itself so continue as usual we start a loop and we put a continue here if this is continue word is appearing here it will start the body re-examine the condition again and these statements will be bypassed this will not be executed whereas break so what will happen break if you use break here then instead of this break will put the body put the control out of the body of the loop so that is the purpose of the break you may also provide an exit status without an explicit exit status the exit command will exit with the status of zero indicating a success handling input if you want to accept a value from the user you can use a read command read followed by file name so whatever user types here that will go to this variable again the hyphen and specify that after typing this message may wait here the read reads from the standard input and assign one word to each variable if there are more than one value specified then they will definitely they'll go to the variable all the values will go to the variable as I said if you're specifying three values but you mentioned two variables here so first will go to here and second and third both will go to the last one any leftover words are assigned to the last over variable from the list of variable which is specified in read statement so that's a handling input that's how to you take the value from the user by definition in shell a word is defined as a character string surrounding with a white space such as space and tabs can be changed if you want with the interfile separator ifs like this is the ifs if you want to set it to colon you can specify f ifs equals colon if there are more words than variable the last variable is assigned all the remaining words this is the same thing which is coming here this statement and this statement is the same options to read command read command have multiple options hyphen a input is assigned to an array starting with index 0 hyphen d character to use to terminate the input other than new line hyphen n maximum number of characters to read hyphen p prompt string displayed to prompt the user for an input so that means you want to display a message so you don't need echo command in that case you can simply type hyphen p and the message to be displayed hyphen s silent mode don't echo input characters while user types hyphen t timeouts in seconds for read hyphen u file descriptor to read rather than terminal so these are the additional options for read command 
positional parameters shell script allows positional parameters also command lines as well as in functions and uh, those were used in some of the script where I use the term dollar one there are nine positional parameters without any problem but uh, 10 onward have they are little tricky but you can have more than 10 parameters as well positional parameters are special variables that hold the command line arguments to the script the positional parameters are variables available in dollar one dollar two dollar three up to dollar nine no problem after that you have to put them into curly braces dollar eleven dollar twelve dollar ten so that's the difference these are normally assigned to more meaningful variable to improve the clarity inside the script dollar star is a special variable which hold all command line arguments so together as a single string the variable dollar zero is reserved for the program name the script name variable about dollar nine requires special handling so they use curly braces as I said all positional parameters are read only that means you cannot assign you cannot have a statement like dollar a equals to two dollar two is equal to five you can't have that using functions in shell script shell functions improve program readability I don't think it is a new topic to you guys because you are using functions when we have been using functions in our training as well they also helps you remove the repetition code from the scripts if there is a section of shell code that is trying to accomplish the same task and it is five or more lines long then it is a good candidate for being put into a separate function this is known as functional decomposition and will improve the program readability if there is a piece of code that you are likely to use again and again then this is also a good candidate for being put into a separate function this is called code reusability shell function must be declared before they are used there is nothing called prototyping here you have to declare them and then you I mean define them and then you have to use them argument may be passed to functions by using its own set of parameters dollar one dollar two like my function dollar one so this will go to uh, my uh, my function dollar file name so this will go to dollar one variable inside the function the value of dollar file name will be available as dollar one in the body of uh, my function local make the variable available outside the function this is called information hiding and useful for keeping functions compartmentalized in addition we can prevent it it prevent us from accidentally overwriting the global variables functions with parameters example function dot sh we are passing two variables like we are passing two parameter to this function and this is the call to the function sum 5 10 so 5 will go to dollar 1 10 will go to dollar 2 uh, and you are adding them and you are displaying the value in this example we declare a new function called sum which emits the sum of two parameters passed to it dollar one represent first parameter dollar two represent the second one what happens if the caller does not provide all the necessary parameters I mean if the caller passes only one instead of two then what will happen this is one example we can have conditional testing like if this hash dollar hash is a special variable which actually have number of parameters passed so if you you can compare it if dollar has not equal to two you can use this conditional test and uh, display a message for the user uh, that your position or your parameters are not sufficient or uses is uh, parameter one plus parameter two that way you can specify any message appropriate return value from functions we can also return values from functions 
we use the return command to actually return the value from the function and then we use the special variable dollar question mark to access this value from the caller that's quite n uh, normal as I discussed the dollar question mark special variable the value returned by the program by the script so this is the program and we are returning value return value dollar question mark so what do we expect here whatever parameter you pass you are adding the two so 15 should be the value stored into a return variable shell script debugging uh, don't expect too much from here uh, no comprehensive descriptive mechanism except that you can have two options in order to debug a shell script invoke the shell interpreter with the debug options or change the shebang to include debug options so you can invoke it from the shell using hyphen x or hyphen v or you can pass these two inside the shell script hyphen x and hyphen v simple directory archive script this is a simple program for you to try what it is doing is whatever directory path you specify it will create an archive file of that directory the goal of the, uh, the script is to provide a subdirectory archive tool the single parameter for the tool is the subdirectory that will be archived using the tar utility with some resulting archive file stored in the current working directory so first do some error checking number of parameter passing then if it is not a directory then display that not a directory target must be a directory so we are checking some conditions e d uh, with a negation right then remove the existing archive if it is already there and then uh, with this and then we are displaying it uh, creating the archive so this is a good example you can explore you can enhance it you can make it make you can make it, make it better so summary we took a quick tour of bash scripting shell we explored variables including special variable that describe the environment the basics of scripting were introduced along with dem demonstration of simple numerical methods in bash fundamental concept in bash were also reviewed including test conditions and number of looping constructs method for input and uh, output in the script were also discussed in addition to bash function specification constructs and that